Thank you very much uh, once again for joining us here at the India Today South Conclave 2021. Uh, we're going to turn in a moment to God's own country, to Kerala. And can I welcome my three very special guests, A. Sampath, former member of parliament of the CPIM, uh, Professor Shalina of the BJP, and uh, Professor K.B. Thomas uh, of the Congress Party Member of Parliament. Please join us. Please give them a warm round of applause. Please come, ma'am. Ma'am, just see, uh, I think you're in the middle. Yeah. Want to come, sir? Now, one of the lesser known facts of the lovely, wondrous state of Kerala is that what has been described as God's own country is also a country which has been bloodied over the years by a spate of political murders. At least officially, more than 200 have been recorded since 2000. Uh, and in particular, the battles between the RSS, BJP, and the left have, uh, in a sense, in Kannur and beyond, become uh, a source of endless concern and have blotted Kerala's otherwise tranquil political landscape. So three very special guests joining us. Professor K.B. Thomas is Congress's member of parliament. Uh, advocate O.M. Shalina is from the Bharatiya Janata Party and A. Sampath is former MP of the CPIM. All of you have your mics uh, next to you. Do take them. Uh, Ma'am, your mic. Uh, take the other one there. The one next to you. Yeah. And Professor Thomas, the mic. At the... I want to uh, begin by asking uh, Mr. Sampath, since you are the ruling party of Kerala. The general belief has been that when the CPIM is in power, political murders increase. When the UDF is in power, there is a general control over political violence. To that extent, are you responsible for the increased violence that takes place whenever you are in power, Mr. Sampath? No, point blank, uh, with your permission, I may say that uh, uh, you have a misconception about uh, the polit politics of Kerala and the present political situation of Kerala also. Uh, if you go through the statistics uh, during the last five years and uh, if you go through the recent statistics also, uh, the number of the political clashes have come down and uh, even if uh, the number of uh, killings, as you have uh, stated now, uh, it is uh, uh, it has come down quite a lot. But uh, but it is uh, you. Are you not willing to concede that when the UDF has, has been in power, they've been less? I'm only quoting what Uman Chandi, the UDF leader, said on the floor of the Kerala Assembly from 1996 to 2001, when the left ruled Kannur district, witnessed 30 murders. It came down to 10 when the UDF ruled. Likewise, it rose from 30 during 2006-11 when the ref returned to power and again came down to 11. The general belief is that whenever the left is in power, there is a statistical increase in political murders. Can you really deny that? I deny that from my heart of heart. I, I, so is, is Uman Chandi lying? His uh, statistics is not correct. Because why I say, if you allow me one more minute. Yes. Uh, most of the Malayalis have the politics. Since birth, they have politics. And uh, that, you, cannot you, just, that cannot justify murder. No, I, I am not justifying not only the murder, I will not never justify any type of violence also in that matter. Here, uh, even some of the political, even some of the family matters and the clashes between the family members may also be termed as political uh, clashes. That happened. And now, the LDF in power. And you look through the statistics, what has happened. Uh, if there are any political clashes between my party and uh, Advocate Shalina's party in Kerala, Recently, no. And uh, anyway, we, our culture is to, of course, we have political differences and we do not believe in political murders and we don't want to happen it uh, in the God's own country. I, are you saying you've reached a political settlement with the BJP as a result of which in the last couple of years, the number of deaths have gone down? 
because the buzz in Kerala also is about some tacit understanding that is there between the left and the right at the moment. Human life is the most precious one in the world. Whatever politics you may have, whatever belief you may have, your life is precious as my life is also precious. Advocate Shalina, are you going to be as sanguine as my friend uh, Mr. Sampath is when he's saying all is well, this is an exaggeration, a misconception, a lack of understanding of Kerala's politics? Because for the longest time, the BJP has claimed that it is the victim of political violence, even though the figures show that there are left workers also who have been killed by BJP, allegedly killed by BJP RSS activists. You, you took the correct word. It is the allegedly killed. Yes. In fact, I wish to disagree with uh, Mr. Sampath regarding uh, his statement on the political violence in Kerala. Political violence, the word itself is associated with the CPIM, the left politics. Uh, we have seen political violence in Kerala since its inception in 1957 when they came to power uh, through ballot. And now for the last five years, if we see there were about 23 political murders, most of them were, about 17 were from our party, BJP or RSS workers. And even the first month of March, uh, in the first week of March, we have seen a political murder and which was done by the SDPI in which the CPIM is now hand in glove. Uh, the police have remained mute spectators. They killed a 20-year-old BJP RSS worker. Uh, and uh, one um, person who was along with him lost his hand. He, that was chopped off. And another person was badly injured. The police didn't do anything at that time. They, they just looked at it and st stood uh, sp uh, mute spectators. So all these things are happening even right now. Maybe Kannur, from Kannur, we are not hap seeing that happening for uh, two, year, two years, for the last two years. But still it has spread to other parts of Kerala. We, we can see that in 2016, when uh, this party came into power, the first celebration was by killing a person named Pramod from Kudungalur. Thereafter, there, were many, there was a series of killings. I can uh, name many. C.V. Ramachandran was there. Um, Ramit was there, whose father was killed by them uh, 20 years back. Uh, Rajesh was there. Ravindranath, uh, Santosh Kumar, Vanaja, Vimal, uh, and Radha Krishnan. I can name many who have lost their lives at the hands of the CPIM. But it's not one-sided. Let's be very clear. Again, I will quote Mr. Oman Chandi from an RTI this time. He said between 1984-2018, in Kannur at the time, 125 political murders. 78 of these murders were CPIM workers are accused. BJP are accused in 39 of the cases. Congress accused in one case. Maximum killings, he claims, are attributed to BJP at 52, CPIM 46, Congress 19, others 7. It isn't as if the BJP, RSS, there is simply uh, a mute spectator, ma'am. You no, also no. are accused in several cases of killing CPIM uh, I do, workers. I do agree there was uh, the BJP persons are accused in certain cases. But if we see, in the TP Chandrasekharan case, when the accused was uh, questioned, he said that in the KTJ Krishnan master case, the, the, the names given were of uh, fake uh, people. They were not the actual accused. So likewise, on all cases where, uh, where uh, these murders uh, uh, happen, there are names being given and the police make them accused. So we are not sure whether the, it is actually the B BJP or the RSS person. If we take the example of the murder that happened in Trishur district uh, uh, two, three months back, even in that case, there was an accusation that it is the BJP workers who are in behind that. But in fact, it was not that. So likewise, when the power is with them, when the law and order with, is with them, there are false accusations as well that is happening. So this, this. Uh, so you're that, saying BJP RSS workers are never involved not, in politics? Not never, I say. But the thing is that at times we have to, we have to. You have to retaliate. Retaliate. At, the, at times we have to do that to stop this. So th those situations have happened, but not that it is all, always that we started. Okay. In most cases, it is the CPIM who have started it, and we have to retaliate. I, Mr. Sampath is smiling. I'll come back to him in a moment. But uh, Professor Thomas, you know, the Congress also has blood on its hands. The ruling left Democratic Front convener, uh, Mr. Vijay Raghavan, has alleged Congress and BJP always portray CPM as the killer party. Truth is otherwise. In Kerala, most Congress leaders have criminal gangs which they nurture and use against their political opponents. 
There are gang wars even in groups within the Congress. Three Congress workers were brutally murdered in 2013 and 15 by rival groups within the party in Thrissur district. The Congress is only trying to portray itself as a messiah of peace. Do you also have blood on your hands? See, or less blood? See, when you look at the murder in Kerala, there should be some authentic records. So we have to look at the record of the National Crime Records Bureau. Hmm. And what the Bureau says, general murder, Kerala is only number two, next to Dakshadu. But when it comes to the political murder, yes. we are top at three, third rate. So, and you find out this murder taking place, especially in the northern part of Kerala. You know, it was in between 2000 and 2016, in Kananur district, which is a stronghold of both uh, BJP. So, if you can hold your mic close. Uh, BJP and CPM, there were 69 political murders. And another factor which has come out is looking at the conviction. Kerala, the police is very efficient, the media is very strong, the general public is aware of things. But when it comes to the general murder, you now these culprits are being punished. But when it comes to the political murderers, many of them escapes. And so the, the reason is they are giving undue protection by the political parties. Coming all, to all political parties? Will you concede all, that see, all political parties no, no, patronize criminal gangs? No, no, no not Congress. I can be authentically say we, we are one of the political parties. We don't have any criminal, uh, uh, criminal groups. Maybe in Kananu, I know, I agree. Because of the political situation there, maybe there is some kind of a uh, uh, groups which are self-defense. There are in Kananu and Malabar some places. But in general, everybody, Dhambatta will also agree that we are one of the parties. We don't have any uh, gangs. No, he's, he, you know, he is quietly smiling, listening to both uh, uh, Shalina and you. No, he or always smiles. He is always that smiling. Is his, uh, no, no, that is his uh, weapon. <laughs> no, no, but, but Mr. Sambat, you raised an interesting argument which needs to be taken forward. That is part of the problem that Kerala is a deeply, or should I say, hyper-politicized society. When you are so politicized, when everything is played out in politics, when it inevitably leads to confrontation and in times to bloody confrontation, especially in North Kerala, Kerala. But as Advocate Shalina suggested, it is now spreading to other parts as well. Is that true or not? It's uh, not true. And, uh, no, you admitted it's a very politicized society. It's a very, very, politi very politicized <laughs> society. I agree with that. But the political murders are not increasing. It is decreasing, one. Hmm. Number two, during the last five years of the LDF uh, regime in Kerala, can you cite one example of uh, communal clashes and the murder on the basis of religion or caste uh, or on the basis of any religious festivals there, which has happened during the time of the Congress-led UDF government there? Any single murder I can. And just, just one more second. Uh, I am from a party which was, uh, since its uh, inception in 1964, the CPIM, the CPM is the only party in Kerala which has lost the maximum number of its girders, workers and family members so far. Till now, since 1964, it has lost more than 583 of its members and its workers and even the family members, even women folk also. Even uh, the students who have not attained the age of 18, they have also been murdered. I am not uh, saying that uh, the party of my learned friend, uh, Advocate Shalina, uh, is, is a savior. Uh, I cannot say so. Even a child of nine years of age was also attacked and killed by RSS workers in Kerala. If they are saying that their hands are clean, they are having the largest number of RSS shakhas in the whole of India. If you go through the data, in Kerala, they are having the maximum number of shakhas there. And what they are doing? They are always they are adopting the peaceful methods. Can you say that? But I say, you also admit that. It's a truth, nothing else but truth, that during the last two, three years, all parties are trying their best to have a peaceful atmosphere in Kerala. Whatever you think, Kerala will be 
we will be definitely we will be we all three not only we all three but all other parties are also are having the dialogue and we are trying our best not to what one shed even a tree, single drop of blood you made an interesting comment suggesting that kerala is a state where there have been no communal related uh, violence in the last few years however however what that you admit i think no no no, no. let me have that a compliment no no no, no, no. E, e, kerala certainly may have made the attempt however let's be clear advocate shalina referred to it an rss worker was killed recently uh, 24th february 2021 allegedly in a clash with stpi members stpi is the political offshoot of the popular front of india and with the rise of the pfi there's a sense that inevitably on the ground there will be clashes that will be seen through the prism of hindu muslim politics how sure and confident are you that kerala is not in a sense veering towards potential communal clashes on a much larger scale there are isolated instances at the moment but what makes you believe that with the rise of parties like the stpi the rise of the bjp in some parts of kerala inevitably clashes will take place so you see i am coming from the capital of kerala which was closed for more than 7 days during the tenure of uh, one ld uh, sorry udf government you you might have heard of lord uh, sri padmanabha uh, so that uh, chalite that bazaar which used to function even during midnight that was closed and uh, that was the only bazaar which was functioning even during midnight and uh, it was just because of the unity of the common people and the working class of kerala that bazaar could be reopened that all happened I, 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 so some... you are saying communal clashes more likely to take place when the udf is in power Definitely. professor commerce you want to re re respond to that that no. the, the are, congress you know the congress has been accused traditionally of this that the congress is rule while you blame the cpim for political murders they will blame you for for stirring communal clashes when you are in power or not controlling communal clashes when I, you are in I, power i i i do agree there had been some communal clashes but it has been properly contained also i remember that the time of mr karunagaran there was some clash in trivandrum it was immediately controlled but generally what is the attitude of cpm and the rss or bjp it is very recently the general secretary of the cpm kodiyeri balakrishnan said if we get in the field we will get in the wire in the in the boundary so that is their attitude that is teeth for teeth eye for eye this attitude they have not changed similarly is in the case of rss they said we will also give it back similarly so this situation is their attitude has to change okay it is true with the, the younger generations are coming the media becoming very vibrant uh, people getting educated there is common awareness people are against violence that is a true factor but the mindset of both bjp and cpm have not changed they are all for the if, if i get one i will give two advocate charida is that is that true that the rss bjp in a way is also scrambling for political space right traditionally politics in kerala was ldf versus udf the bjp wants political space the rss has always had a strong presence on the ground now you got parties like the sdpi the political front of the popular front of india which is bringing in some say an islamist brand of politics which is clashing with your hindutva brand so you have the potential again for a flesh conflict because sdpi workers have been killed and so have rss workers see sdpi workers have not been killed by us in fact uh, what i would say on this is that the space that we are finding in kerala is with the help of the development that the bjp government has in the center brought to the entire country and that is what we have kept forward and that is why we have seen the recent past it's in few days that prominent uh, people like e shridharan jacob thomas two retired judges like p chidambaresh as well as uh, shri p n ravindran and people like that are joining bjp because of the outlook and the political alternative that bjp is giving forward so it is true that we on us our part as well have tried to contain this uh, violence politics because no party approves that the leaders doesn't approve that they say so we also as we say that we don't want the political violence to continue here we want to co uh, contain that and we don't want to be a part of that we don't want any of our workers to lose their lives for this but uh, that is our earnest effort and 
because of that, it is coming down. But unfortunately, what is happening, as I told earlier, what is happening is that the new forms or the new allies of CPIM, like the SDPI, they are, they are taking charge of this. And that is why we have lost our worker last... last you're, you're suggesting that the SDPI is an ally of the, uh, of the left democratic oh, front? Why not? They have, they have, uh, they, they have joined in the uh, recent elections. They have joined government in recent elections in Panchayat. In, in Shornur municipality, they are the supporters. So, like that, that is, that is why the government is not taking action. That is why law and order situation is bad. So when they are like that, say if you take the example of Abhimanyu who has lost his life, the SFI leader of Maharaja's college, that was the, 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 the campus front who was the accused therein. So this is the, the, the kind of uh, political support that the SDPA or its student wing is getting from the, the, the left government right now. So that is why the murders are happening and it is going on and it may also sprout up. Uh, that is what we uh, suspect. What, which is the stronger unit within your, uh, within the Kerala Sang Paribar, if I may call it? The Shakha culture, traditional RSS uh, controlled Shakhas, or the political wing and those whom you are now bringing into the political wing of the party to expand your political influence? At the end of the day, you had only one MLA. Now you want to expand, I know. What matters more to the BJP uh, uh, RSS in Kerala? Strengthening your traditional Sangh network which has been in conflict with the CPM or to build a parliamentary wing which will expand your number of uh, MLAs? See, the uh, expansion of the Sangh, it, it automatically takes place. It doesn't have any connection with the political uh, upbringing of the party. And the party as such, the party is uh, developing or is uh, increasing its uh, perspectives or increasing its numbers in Kerala is because of the development uh, motto that we have shown that the, that the leadership that the central government has shown to the uh, people. They, they are, all the people are looking for development and the devotion for development that the Prime Minister has shown, the other ministers have shown, the administration, how the administration is being done, how the projects are being implemented, how things are being done on time, how transparency we have brought in. All these things matters when it comes to electric politics. So that is what we keep forward right now. Professor Thomas, does that worry you that this new assertive BJP and the well-entrenched left will become slowly principal players in Kerala? Congress will get squeezed out. That if there are disenchanted Congress workers, they are turning now to the right, to the, uh, to the BJP as a potential alternative. Does that worry you? That the future, after so many decades of LDF versus UDF politics, we may now have a third player in Kerala. And that will be increase the hyper politicization. I, I, I do agree on certain points. Because if Congress becomes weak, or if CPM becomes weak, then who is coming up is the BJP RSS combination. And if you look at the political matter of the last 17 years, from CPM workers as 85. And BJP workers, RSS workers, 65. And for us, UDF, it is less than 10. So it's a position. So we are worried. We are worried because whatever said and done, there is some kind of a democratic principle between we and the left parties. There are, there are some ideological differences. But when it comes to RSS and BJP, they use all mechanisms. And these are mechanisms are highly undemocratic. And with the government in power in Delhi. Give me an example. You are making a very serious charge. You are suggesting you, that the have, RSS have, BJP have, have, is rising in Kerala on anti-democratic principles. Yes. The government in India, India no, is... Give me an example. Yes, I have put example, hundreds of examples. Government agencies are misused against the political rivalries. The, uh, the, the central government agencies are right. We have seen so many raids in Canada against the pro pro political rivalries. This is going on, unprecedented. I was a member of parliament from 1984. I was in the central government. We have never used it, but we find out in Kerala now the, the central agencies are being misused. This is a very serious situation, not in Kerala, throughout the country. Mr. Sampath, who, you know, as, as you look ahead, you've been in politics for, where, for several years. Do you, do you believe that the rise or the emergence at the moment of the BJP will only increase in a way this political competitiveness and perhaps actually over the next decade lead to more clashes? Kerala will go through a period of turmoil as the BJP rises and you and the Congress try to protect your political space. Is that possible? Is that a worry? 
you see most of the people they go to various places of worship but they are uh, against uh, religious fundamentalism as uh, i started my dialogue with you uh, a majority of the malayalis uh, they uh, just like they are uh, what we call born in politics uh, grow in politics just like that uh, in the psyche and in the in their body and as well as in their mind also the politics is there whatever they say sometimes they may say that i don't have any politics they definitely they have but uh, they do not agree with political extremism uh, that is why the maoist uh, etc they cannot uh, have that much of uh, uh, what they can have uh, even though they try their best uh, they cannot uh, grow in kerala here you see the vote the percentage of the vote of the bjp is uh, almost the same during the last local body election and during the last uh, lok sabha election and during the last uh, assembly election also uh, i may be permitted to say that the unfortunately the kerala pradesh congress has become the fixed deposit of the bharatiya janata party this is the present political situation in kerala, kerala pradesh congress committee has become the fixed deposit of, of the B bjp Bar and the congress accuses the bjp of being hand in glove with the left that there is some kind of tacit alliance that has been struck between left and right they can always say that because uh, it's a party which has offered seven states the governments of seven states in front of the bjp yeah, it is just like the procrastination i may say uh, what has happened in karnataka what has happened in madhya pradesh and what has happened in goa and the, the last example the latest one is in puducherry you all know it is not due to our fault it is not due to our fault nobody will blame us here you see in kerala not even a single mla was the bjp tried even though whatever exercise they may engage they are not able to purchase they will never able they will be never be able to purchase even a single mla from the left democratic front udf uh, professor thomas udf I'm, mlas I'm, are purchasable i am sorry my friend sambath forget some facts because except in kerala in other states we are hand in hand in west bengal we are fighting together so how can congress be a fixed deposit of bjp in kerala our complaint is to finish us from the political scene there is a, some kind of an understanding with cpm in kerala not the in their cpm in the national level but cpm kerala and the bjp go together because once congress is finished so they they have got a better chance so i don't agree with my friend that we are the kerala pradesh congress committee is not the fixed deposit but we find is we are the only party which, which in kerala we have to fight both cpm and the bjp you know but is this fight advocate shalina going to take place through the ballot box or is it going to be a bloody fight on the streets the worry is that as you expand you will become a threat to both the parties particularly to the ldf are you also worried that as you go ahead there will be a potential for a bloody conflict between the rising bjp and an entrenched left obviously because as i've told uh, the political ideology of communists is always intolerant they are always anti establishment they believe in class war they are uh, prone to uh, violent protests Uh, if it is for an issue or if it is against science and technology if it is tractor or if it is the computers so we expect that once we grow there will be such a kind of violence from in the from the hands of cpi we are expecting that because they are intolerant and i am sure this electoral or this elections will bring about a great change and the people from K of kerala will change from left to the rightful right that is nda bjp led nda no, no, but is, let's be also clear your goal in this election is not to topple the left or no. to topple the udf your is to grow yes i mean is. from one mla you're not suddenly going to capture power in kerala overnight exactly but but we are sure that even if we uh, expand uh, from 1 to 3 or 4 or 5 that is going to give uh, such kind of goosebumps Yeah, or when they they will be so intolerant or uh, 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 restless on that and they will start their uh, violence on us so that is the kind of uh, experience that we have had in kerala you know mr sampad you called the other parties one party a fixed deposit of the bjp in turn now 
the BJP is saying you are intolerant. Now you, you know, the, the fear is that left over the years has had a sort of dominant space in parts of Kerala. And you do not want to relinquish that dominance, that dominant space because then nothing else will be left in any other part of the country. So you will do whatever it takes to retain that space, including violence. Uh, it is uh, uh, not very curious to hear from uh, a party, a political party, which is uh, very much intolerant in the constitution of India and the constitutional values of India. And a party which uh, always want to demolish the constitutional structure of India and misuse, as Professor Kevi Thomas has said, uh, even the constitutional bodies of India and unleash the central agencies to any extent to capture power and to topple the governments and to mal with malafide intention. In the recent assembly election, which is uh, we are going to face, the LDF is before the people with the development, the policies, the programs, and the achievements. What we have stated in the election manifesto, and which we have been able to do so far, we are not saying that election manifesto is a comedy, just like uh, one of the former heads of uh, BJP in Kerala. Anyway, he is now an honorable uh, governor in a northeastern state. He has openly stated that the election manifesto is only a comedy. Nobody is seriously discussing about it. But we say, we, we say to you that it's a serious document. And you see what we have stated and what we have declared and what we have been able to achieve. During the past last five years, two floods, one Oki, a Nipah virus, then an Ebola virus. And we are still traveling through a tunnel. At the end, we still, we don't know when we will reach, uh, we will fulfill the journey. Not even a single star is uh, shown at the end of the tunnel. We are uh, fighting the COVID-19 also. With the people's uh, participation, we are doing that. Yeah. And we are very much confident that we will, uh, anyway, the Kerala will be again the left democratic friend will win this assembly election and we will come back to power so, again. So we will you continue. Are, you are hoping to win the election on your five-year track record, on the performance of your chief minister, on your manifesto. The BJP, on the other hand, is promising change in Kerala and hoping that that change will take it from one to at least five seats as part of this gradual process of expansion. Professor Thomas, at the very end to you. Your one-time party president, Rahul Gandhi, is an MP from Kerala. Yeah. Is this a make or break election in that sense for the Congress? If you were to lose Kerala and break with the cycle of governments changing every five years, will that lead, you fear, to an influx from your party or an exodus rather from your party to the BJP? Is that a fear that this is a make or break election for the Congress in Kerala? So they say, I do agree with you, this is for us, do or die. Do or die? Die. That's Congress party, is do or die. And that is why we are fighting against both BJP and CPM together. That is a big task we have got, as I said, I, in other states we are going together with CPM. Most of the time you are fighting amongst yourselves, people say. That no, is the no, problem no. in the Congress. See, is a democratic organization. Whatever happens within the party comes out. Not like either BJP or CPM. CPM is a cadre party, we know, very strict discipline. But even now, when this election process started, things are coming bursting out. You, this was a wonder, this is only something we are also wondering why this happens in a party like CPM. Cadre based parties resort to violence and you resort to disagreement and, and, and defections. No, no. <laughs> See, there is a lot of change in the attitude of CPM, so I do agree with that. But, Regarding this democratic forces, secular forces coming together in the country, okay, we have to go together with CPM and left parties. There is no doubt about it. But in Kerala, the problem is, this is a peculiar situation. Kerala, we have to, we are three, it's a three-cornered fight going on. And for us, we are one of the, our motto is that we have given, contributed for, to Kerala for the development. Everybody will agree our contribution is very great. So we are telling the people we have contributed for the development of Kerala, so please elect us. So we are confident that we will come back. Okay, there are differences within the party which is never a secret, which comes out, not like BJP or CPM. Uh, we are such an you know, open organization. You know, in conclusion, I want to understand this. Being carder based parties, while it may make you stronger ideologically and organizationally, 
does it make you also a party which is literally a fighting force which will do anything not just through the ballot but even through the bullet if necessary to intimidate your rivals and control power is being a carder based party your strength but also in a strange way your weakness no it's a strength because a, a cpm is a party which has pledged its allegiance to the constitution of india to protect the constitution of india and to honor the constitutional values of this great nation number 1 and we are fighting for the protection of the secularism and for the communal harmony of the nation not only kerala here you see the state of kerala has achieved quite a lot which many of the indian states cannot even dream of kerala has become a state a state which the bjp loves to hate the second state which they loves to hate it was jammu and kashmir which is not a state now they have partitioned and one has become a union territory without a ele elected legislature also this is what they have done to the north you are making and a very interesting observation you are claiming that kerala is a state that the bjp loves to hate yes that they are using uh, advocate jalni you want to respond to that that your central leadership Obviously. looks at kerala as a state which has, i think one of your leaders once suggested that uh, the situation in kerala was not too different to somalia of course in a in a, another context no, throwing up various context. development indices but either way is there a sense that the bjp wants to capture kerala by hook or crook inside no, that is the, the last frontier for the bjp is kerala it's too once i got kerala i can truly claim to be a pan indian party it's really disheartening to hear it from mr sampath that we hate that the bjp central bjp hate kerala because if we see the kind of development that was pending in kerala for the last so many years which has accelerated now and has been completed if it if you take the case of the alappi bypass the kollam bypass the gail pipeline all these things have been completed now because of the determination of the central government they have not uh, taken the uh, case that the ruling party of kerala is communist or it is opposing us that we we should not look into that and they have given maximum share to kerala so in that pretext if we say the statement is wrong and i request him to withdraw that and we so she wants you to withdraw this statement yes, that the bjp hates kerala isn't that an excessive statement to make they love to hate kerala <clears throat> to be frank i said which has come from my heart you see kerala is one of the states in the indian union if there are if we don't have the states like tamil nadu kerala karnataka bengal uh, rajasthan uh, such like 29 states are there they mm. have reduced it to 28 one moment the honorable home minister takes a slip from out of his pocket in rajya sabha and one uh, state has gone here you see the article 1 of the constitution of india says that india that is bhad shall be a union of state uh, shall be a union of states so if there are no states there is no union at all we are not in the outskirts of indian union and tamil nadu is also not in the outskirts of indian union all these states because of the states you will have a book this is an electronic media it's an ipad i sorry you you will have a book can you have a book without the papers on it a hard copy of uh, the hard bound volume you can you have it without that this is just like the bjp is having an impression that all the powers are uh, centralized on us it is because we people put something on their head never ever in the constitution of india it says about the central government and even you also speaks about the central government and even my some of my leaders also write about the central government it is a union government and the state governments it's not the central government no, no, but when you don't made, think that all the powers when are made, when you made a statement today saying that the center or the bjp loves to hate kerala that's a very serious accusation you are making why i said so you know because kerala faced so two severe floods when the present day prime minister was the chief minister of gujarat and the gujarat experienced the worst natural havoc disaster during his chief ministership uh, atal bihari vajpayee ji was the prime minister of india 
and on the republic day his appeal to the whole nations uh, the to the world the whole world was uh, uh, give the maximum help to for the reconstruction of gujarat and when the same chief minister became the prime minister of india he was preventing all the help from outside india for the rehabilitation the reconstruction of kerala you see this has happened and not only that if some of my bjp friends say that it is because of us in uh, union government that you were able to complete the people's power the people's participation and the state government's effort the political will and in a time bound manner we have done that at five years back uh, many of the people thought that, that the gail pipeline would not have been completed who was in power at that time in the union government may i ask you sir at that time who was why at that time the udf government was not able to fulfill the gail pipeline the national highway work the uh, uh, the kcb power line uh, between the edaman kochi why that were not able to we were not able to fulfill why we were not able to uh, start the work of the backwaters uh, the inland water transporting advocate shalila you want to respond that somewhere kerala for some reason for the longest time was not on the bjp's horizon as a political space to expand and now that it is some of the baggage of the past still comes to haunt you that there is discrimination towards kerala in fact that statement is wrong because uh, the uh, point of mr sampath was that we were the, extent, the union government as they say was obstructing kerala from taking uh, contributions uh, ta contributions from uh, ex from foreign countries but when the uh, gold scam came out we understood why the cpim led government wanted so much foreign foreign contributions and in the uh, and the in, in the disguise of their schemes they were trying to get commission out of that we have seen that and such statements have come out so it clearly says what the cpm wanted out of the foreign contributions and foreign contributions we have perfect laws in land which says the restrictions on that and only the union government has pointed it out and more than that the claim of the foreign contributions which they now say the governments which on which they said that they have offered have said that we have not made such a claim such a statement that we will be offering such a, a, a contribution so all these things makes it clear that all these accusations are false what the, the, the development that they claim for the basic developments the infrastructure developments the contribution of the union government the bjp led government at the center is far far better than the upa government in which they were even a party in the first term okay at the very end professor thomas do you believe that as is being suggested that the center has been discriminatory towards kerala is that a fair accusation to make unfortunately the bjp colleagues usually say whatever happened in kerala was within the last 7 years whether the nh bypass in alappi or waterways but we should understand kerala is one is one of the most developed state in the country it is as developed as many of the european countries and contribution i do agree you provide everything to the people except jobs jobs half of the malayalis are outside this is <laughs> where we find our areas. because they have they, no, there is not there that. aren't enough productive jobs that's no, okay we are a small strip of land we have got our own limitations but educationally we are at the highest level healthcare we are at the highest level which goes to both udf and ldf because this has been ruling alternative but we have made some wonderful expands example says kochi airport which is the only airport in the country where the malayalis have contributed similarly in the, in the sports sector we are number one so th there is a development which has taken which is called the kerala model but and so the bjp friends should not think that everything happened with the seven years no we want some positive help from the government of india unfortunately we all feel there is a discrimination okay there is a kerala model a model which has shown social and certainly remarkable figures on social and human development there is the kannur model as well which over the years has led to political violence <laughs> i hope that the kerala model triumphs over all else because kerala in a sense is a representative of some of the best values of this country and i hope that all three of you in their own way all the three major parties now of kerala will contribute to that and may the best party win without the use of violence as 
has at times been the case in some parts of Kerala. I thank you all very much thank for you. joining us. I hope that the stereotype of Kerala is not one of violence, but of God's own country. Thank you all very much. Please Andrei. give a very big hand. Thank you.